In this lesson, I will explain to you some errors which are mean absolute error, mean square error, root mean square error, and mean square log errors. How you have to calculate these errors in Python, I will explain to you. But before going to start, I will highly recommend that you have to watch my previous video because this is related to the previous one. So first of all, you have to import some libraries. I have written pandas and matplotlib, so I am going to execute it. It will execute in few seconds and then you have to import your data frame. Whatever is the name where you have saved your data frame, you have to write down your extension here in quotation. And uh, I said my data frame name is df when I will run it. And here I have used the head function which will show top five records which we had discussed so many times. If you want to see the shape of your data, so there are 50 records and two columns. One is the salary, one is experience. Salary is the dependent variable while experience is the independent variable. So here we are making two variables X and Y with respect to experience and salary. So this is the experience and this one Y is the salary and I have used I log function. That is why I am using the index here. That is why I say that you have to watch my previous video in order to understand this one. If you want to check the data type, so D types, here I am executing, so experience and salary both have the float data type. So from here we have to uh, split our data into two parts. One is called the training, other is the testing. So training is our actual data set, sometimes it is called true. So I will show you how you have to calculate the errors. First here is from sklearn.models. You have to import train test split. And what it does for us, it will give us x train, x test, y train, and y test. So you have to write down in parenthesis the variable name. And here you have to write down the test size, not the train size, test size. I said I am splitting my data into uh, two parts, 70% for the training and 30% for testing. Random underscore is state, which we discussed so many times. So I am going to execute it and it's executed successfully. Then if you want to check X train, which will show us 70% of our data, not the top 70%, not the bottom, but random, right? Here I have used random underscore state is equal to four. So if I will run my data 10 times or 20 times, it will give us the same output, right? That is the purpose of the random underscore state. Same thing you can check for Y test and then uh, X test and so on. So here you have to import linear regression. I am going to execute it. So you will see it will execute it successfully. This is my class and then this is the object of my class and the name of the object is model. Here I want to fit my data. So fit X train and Y train 70% data for training and 30% for testing. So it is also executed successfully. Now my X test if I will run it so you will see this is the test and in test we have 30 percent that is 15 records of 50. Now from here this is my model dot predict with respect to x test right so I made one variable the name of that variable is y predict when I will execute it so see we had 15 records for testing and these are the predicted values if you want to check the actual values, so this is y test I am executing now you can compare in actual we have 3200 salary but in prediction our value is 3657 and so on similarly these this is for the actual amount and this is our predicted amount for our testing data if you want to visualize so just execute it these two lines you have to write down and see here the green one are the actual data points and if you will count these are 15 because our testing data is 15 the red one is the prediction our predicted line now we have to work on our topic that is our error. So see here it says that our actual data point is this one. If we have a five years experience, so it says that around 5000 salary or maybe a little bit more. If you will check the original data, then you can find out. But our prediction says that 
it is around 3000 you can say right similarly these are the actual points here the if the difference is very low means the actual value and the predicted value are close but this one is the highest so how we will calculate these errors there are different methods first one is called the mean absolute error and here i have written the definition the mean absolute error of the model with respect to a test set is the mean of the absolute value of the individual prediction errors on overall all instances in the data in the test data right so how it will work i will show you in excel file then i will come back here in this way you will learn more and it will be much more clear so this is the dummy data mean absolute error is also called absolute accuracy error the formula is submission of 1 to n means suppose we have 10 observation or 20 whatever and it as it is called absolute so these two line represent the absolute values sometimes i have used the symbol y or x or p because if you will see different books they have used different symbols but the concept is same so suppose this is our actual data points these are our predicted data points right in the third column we have to find out the difference means the difference between actual and predicted this is also called the residual error and then is the absolute value absolute value means see suppose if the difference is zero it means this is our actual data points and this is our predicted data points means our actual is on the line that is the difference is zero here our predicted value is 6000 more compared to actual and here our actual value is 1000 more compared to the predicted so absolute means if we have a negative negative then we have to ignore this negative and made it positive if it is positive it will remain positive but if it is negative you have to make it positive that is the meaning of these two line absolute and then you have to add here right if i will click here you can see the formula is here right and this is the total from from d2 to d8 and then here is the mean c45 d9 divided by 7 y7 because we have seven dummy observations so this is called the n if you will read here y is the prediction x i is the true true is also called the actual value so this is called the mean absolute error right first you have to convert all negatives into positive then add it take the mean sorry so if we will go back to our jupyter notebook so for mean absolute error you have to import from sk learn and see mean absolute error so mean absolute error of y test and y predict right y test and y predict when i will execute it it will show us 365 is the mean absolute error of our this data set this graph this is the testing next one is the mean square error right so what is the mean square error here is the definition but i will show you here then it will be much more clear to you mean square error the formula is one over n n is the total number of sample of the data sets right y i minus y hat so here see you can see i have used y and all the informations are here because in different books they have used different symbols but the concept is same again you have to take the difference here a2 minus b2 which is called the residual error and then see here in the last one we had made it all positive that is called the absolute but here we have to make the square of this difference right 600 multiplied by 600 500 multiplied by 500 so these are the squared values the green one is the sum of all these values and at the and you have to see here divided by seven this is the mean that is why it is called mean square error you have to make the square of the difference and then take the mean now we will go back to our original data set 
in Jupyter Notebook from sklearn.matrix you have to import mean squared see here you have to write down the word squared not square if you will write down square there will be error it will not run and then mean squared error y test for n y predict when I will execute it it is 282,796.84 then is the root mean square error so i will again show you how to calculate root mean square error the formula is whatever we did in our here mean square error right mean square error exactly the same but here we have to take the square root at the end instead of y i have used x here y again as i have told you different books use different symbols that is why i am explaining you so here is the difference and again the square of the difference make the total and then this is the this is the average of this total and then you have to take the square root of this average how to take in excel in excel always the formula starts with equal to sign just write down sq it will show you this one this is the square root write down just click here and parenthesis closed right i will show you again this is in this way how simple it is same thing we will do in python in jupyter notebook from math first of all you have to import this is the square root and from sk learn mean squared error because we have to take the square root that is why here you have to write down the square root as well otherwise what will happen otherwise you will get this answer this one but we want the square root as well that is why you have to write down sqrt this is for square root executed so 531.978 is our mean root mean square error and the last is the mean square log error here is the definition but again i will show you in excel what is the meaning of this this is our actual data point this is our predicted data point what you have to do you have to add one in the actual so this is 2000 and then 2000 plus one right similarly in each value you have to add one in predicted values you have to add one and then you have to take the log of this actual plus one for this c column and then you have to take the log of the predicted value this column and then in g column you have to take the difference of log of actual log of predicted e2 minus ef and then you can drag down here is the square you have to make the square of all these values square does not mean that you have to multiply by 2 means multiply by the same amount so if it is negative it will convert into positive then this is the total this is the average and this is the square root right and this if you will see this is the formula this is here i have used p and a is your predicted or target values so same thing here first p i plus 1 means actual plus 1 this column and then you have to take the log of this column minus right a i plus 1 this one and then you have to take right here you have to subtract these two columns this minus this at the end you have to take the average and the square root same thing in we will do by using the jupyter notebook import numpy as np for this one from sklearn you have to import mean squared log error as we are taking the square root so you have to add square root np dot square root of mean square log error and execute it so 0.1267 is the mean squared log error so i hope the concept of all these errors are clear to you but here i will show you one more thing that as i said we have split our data into two parts testing and training if the data is small and if you do not want to split in two parts so what you have to do after making these two variables or check the data types after this you can visualize your data and after visualization if you are not using this split then you have to go directly to your um, to here and instead of y test and y predict you have to write down x and y or whatever you, the name you are using for your variables so this is your homework you have to do it but if still any point is not clear you can ask me subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching